Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That was that was okay if I was saying praise the praise me. Don't praise me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody in this room has breath in their body. So can the people of God give our great God a great praise? I said, can we give our great God? a great praise one that he's deserving of one that he's worthy of one that he's deserving of yeah we're so excited to see you in the house one more time aren't you excited to be in the house of god come on you got to make some more noise than that if you're excited to be in the house of god one more time God allowed us to make his wake up list. Ain't that a special gift? I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I just celebrated a birthday, right? So I'm so excited to be in church again. There are a lot of people who don't have that testimony. Amen. So God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the gift of life. 
God, we thank you for giving us the mobility of our limbs. God, we thank you for the small things that we forget to say thank you for. Like being able to touch, being able to feel, being able to dress ourselves, being able to provide for ourselves, being able to breathe on our own, being able to walk into the places that we desire to walk into, being able to drive to the places that we want to drive to, God, being able to put on the clothes that we want to put on, being able to eat the food that we want to eat, God, we thank you for the many blessings that you did not find it robbery to give to us. So God, we just honor you. We praise you. We lift your name up, God. We thank you for every blessing. God, we thank you for your awesome healing. God, we thank you for your awesome power. God, we thank you for your awesome strength. God, we thank you for your unwavering love. God, we thank you for giving us a love so unconditional. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. God, we thank you that you thought enough of us to even put us in this room full of believers so that we may lift up your name and sit in expectation of your glory. God, we thank you that we can sit and wait on your glory to show up in the room and lives be changed and hearts be filled and bodies are healed and minds are set free and everybody is delivered God we thank you we thank you for every miracle God we thank you for every blessing God we thank you for every trial God we thank you for every test God we thank you for every obstacle because you said that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and God we are a people who love you so we know that everything we know that all things 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 are working for the good of them who love the Lord and we say we love you we say we bless you and we honor you and the people of God said amen Amen. Now for my people who are online as well as in the sanctuary, do me a favor. I need you to simply get your phones out. I know Bishop may tell you to do this as well. Don't tell him that I told you already. But get your phones out. Text three people. Tell them to get into the sanctuary for we've already begun what is going to be a mind-blowing service. If you believe that God is going to do something special today, shout amen. sent me wonderful very special beautiful gift heaven sent me very wonderful supernatural special everybody say heaven Wonderful, wonderful, very special. Very special. It's a beautiful gift. Beautiful gift. See heaven, heaven me up. very wonderful, very wonderful. Supernatural. supernatural, special gift. Special. When I called him, he answered prayers. When I need him, he's right there, and his love has higher than I could ever, could ever. He is, he is a wonderful, simple, special, supernatural. Say, hey. 
said the same thing he did for me, he'll do for you. He'll do for you.
wonderful. wonderful. Very special. It's a beautiful gift. God, we thank you for the gift. Heaven, Heaven sent me a very wonderful, very wonderful, supernatural, supernatural, special gift. Come on, everybody, one more time, one more time. See, Heaven, Heaven sent me a wonderful, a very special. Guess what? It's a beautiful gift. Yeah, heaven. A very wonderful. Supernatural. Y'all should have it now. Come on, Jeremy, one more time. Oh, say heaven sent. A wonderful. A very special. Beautiful gift. Say heaven. A very wonderful. A super. How many of you believe that this morning? Come on, one more time. If you believe that about Jesus, come on. Say heaven. Wonderful. Very special. Beautiful gift. A very wonderful, very wonderful supernatural. Come on, let's listen to them sing it. Special. Come on, let me hear y'all sing it out here. Come on, heaven. Say heaven. A wonderful, very special, beautiful gift. Oh, see heaven. A very wonderful. Supernatural. I promise I'm gonna leave you alone. Special with gift. hands lifted, everybody. Come on. Heaven See heaven. heaven. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very special. Beautiful gift. Oh, see heaven. A very wonderful. Supernatural. Special gift. Oh, say heaven. Very wonderful. It's beautiful. Special gift. Say heaven. A very wonderful. Supernatural. Jesus. 
If you believe that name is above every name, can you give the Lord a praise all over this sanctuary? No, come on, if you believe that that name is the name that is above every name. Come on, if you really believe that this morning, if you are thankful today for the birth of Jesus Christ, anybody glad today that this Christmas season is not about gifts, if it's not about the greatest gift that was ever given to us, I want you to give God a great praise all over this sanctuary for the greatest gift humanity has ever seen and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. Can you just give him a praise right in this room right now? If you're thankful for Jesus, come on, if you're thankful for Jesus, can you just thank him? Can you thank him for loving us enough that he came to die for us? Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Listen, even as you try to take your seat, just speak to somebody, hug them, high five them, sanitize your hand later. Everybody ought to know that one. Jesus, the light of Come on, I feel like having a little church this morning. Come on, everybody, walk in the light. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful. Come on, let's have a little church.
This is the day the Lord has made. We make the choice to rejoice and we are glad in it. Well, I see a whole lot of y'all wore your ugly sweaters. I think some of y'all didn't intend to wear ugly sweaters, but y'all participated without knowing. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> now, Every visitor that's a family member that came with somebody, this is how we act every Sunday. So I decided we wouldn't have a contest because Pastor and I were going to win. It's not the North Pole, it's Wakanda forever. Y'all see that? Huh? Y'all said Tanya was going to win? With. <laughs> That looks like a malnourished Florida gator. That, is that what that is? That's what happens to gators when they don't go to bowl games. Is that what happens? Don't act like y'all don't know this is Seminole country. Y'all tripping. I forgot to do this last Sunday and I got just like three announcements and I'm a preach. Um, I forgot to, to celebrate, and I'm really serious about this, um, the HBCU National Champions, the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. Those rattlers brought home the HBCU National title. Yes, we celebrate all the rattlers this morning. Yeah, what a great, I see your Congresswoman, you're doing a little too much, I see you right there. No, seriously, we celebrate that school that sits on the highest of seven hills. We thank God for the Rattlers bringing that title home to Florida. And regardless of what the college football committee said, the Seminoles are gonna bring the other one to Tallahassee. No, because there's the AP National Championship. I'm hating. Y'all might as well just, I'm sulking. I'm sitting in the corner sucking on my thumb and all of that. Y'all might as well just get used to it. But no, seriously, to, to Florida A&M, man, we celebrate all of you who are alumni, students, everybody. What an amazing first championship since the Rudy Hubbard show. Y'all remember when Rudy Hubbard brought the championship home. And so, Perry, I think you were on that team, weren't you? Pop, you on that team too, that's right. Yeah, we got two national champions in here. And so we celebrate Florida a and What a great, a great feat that you all have done. Uh, Pastor, hand me my, my folder right there, please, yeah. Y'all look good in your, in your sweaters, though. Y'all look mighty good. I had one friend told me um, they don't own ugly sweaters. And they in here this morning. I'm not going to say who they are, but they told me they don't. They told me they don't own ugly sweaters. I know that's a lie because I've seen them in ugly sweater, but I won't. I won't talk about it. <laughs> Listen, today is the last day to bring all of your items for body and soul. Next, uh, next Saturday, as we have done every quarter of this year, we have tried to do ministry to the unsheltered um, and the unhoused. And so it has been such a tremendous blessing all year long. Uh, that we've been able to do that. And so uh, this is our last one for 2023. And I want to take a moment to commend uh, my team, my staff, to commend all of our volunteers, all of our ministry leaders. Can y'all help me thank God for all of them who have made this particular ministry project this year 
to all of you such a wonderful success uh, on this year. And, and so this coming Saturday, we're doing it Saturday because of, instead of Sunday because Sunday is New Year's Eve. So Saturday, we will have our body and soul, and uh, this is the last day for your, uh, uh, for you to be able to bring items. And so um, if you have them, bring them. If you're at home right now, um, put some clothes on, bring them, and just stay inside the church. Put your pajamas, some folk got on pajamas in here. Put, just leave your pajamas on. Make sure they're nice pajamas. But I think the children are wearing pajamas today, isn't that right? Yeah, the children are wearing pajamas today. That's pretty dope. And uh, so today is the last day to bring those in. Don't forget, our temple cleanup is on January the 6th from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. We want everybody to come and share and participate in cleaning up the temple of the Lord. It is so important that we make sure we appreciate the holiness and sanctity of the Lord's house you only appreciate that which you invest in. Amen. And so I want to encourage, there's no volunteer team. There's no cleanup team. All of us are the cleanup team. January the 6th, 8.30 to 11.30. Pastor will be celebrating her 60th birthday on that day. January the 6th. Come on, let's praise God. She looked she look good for 60, doesn't she? Praise God. Not really. No, no, no. She'll be 55 on that day. Yeah, so <laughs> well, we're having temple cleanup, and so we want you, if you have strong cleanup items, bring them with you. We'll have some here as well, and we're going to clean the entire campus. Listen, one of the things I'm really excited about with our ministry leaders of Elevate 215, Beam, the Beamans, y'all stand for me. I'm really excited about January. What? One of the things, one of the things I am thoroughly convinced of is that if the church doesn't teach certain things, we leave our children open to them being taught in the streets or by the lyrics or by the television. If we don't teach them from the word of God and give them space to be honest, vulnerable, and transparent about some of the things they struggle with, Sometimes they fall into decisions because they have not been provided space for conversation, correction, and enlightenment. Y'all say amen. So one of the things the Beamans are going to do, and I, this is going to be so powerful, beginning on the second Sunday in January, they will be doing for Elevate uh, 215, that's ages 13 to 18, a youth sex series now see so all right touch an imitate neighbor here he go because here's my problem teenagers show up pregnant and y'all ready to put them out but then we try to provide an avenue to give them biblical understanding and y'all get quiet i don't understand that a teenager shows up pregnant, you don't want them to come to church. You don't want them in the choir. You, yeah, now y'all real quiet. And so we want to provide space. Let me tell you something. Young folk struggle with sex and sexuality. This is why so many of our young folk are in trouble because the church is scared to deal. Sex is in the Bible. So why can't we deal with stuff that's in the Bible? Amen. I may do one in the sanctuary while y'all doing it. Somebody said we need it. No, because really, young people struggle with sexuality. There is, there, there is, uh, Lord have mercy. There's so much. I wouldn't want to be a teenager in this day and time for nothing in the world. There's so much out there, and if we don't try to provide biblical wisdom, instruction, charges, and commandments from the Word of God, they will never know. And so I'm so excited about this. Now, wisdom has led them, uh, and I think this is incredible, wisdom has led them to say that there must be a parental consent. All right? Parental consent, that means they're going to talk about it all. 
And so parents, what we need you to do is text TBC, yeah, there it is on the screen, TBC Elevate, but do Elevate like you see on there, TBC Elevate to 54244. Just don't include the 215, but the Elevate, how you see it on here, and you see it at the bottom of the screen. Text Elevate, uh, TBC Elevate to 54244, or you can email Elevate, spelled the same way, at thebethelexperience.com. Hear me clearly. If they do not have a parental consent form, now at 18, I don't think you need no consent form. This 13 to 17, right? If they do not have a parental consent form, they will not be able to sit in on those sessions. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right? So please, please, you've got two weeks to get that done. I'm really excited. I think that's going to be uh, an absolutely amazing series. Next Sunday is New Year's Eve, and I'm so excited. We have two services. We have our 9.30 a.m. service, and then we have our 6 p.m. service. Choir, all the all out there, and all of you that may be out of time for Christmas and, and li listening in, is there a, a rehearsal Thursday? There seems to be nobody that knows. There is a rehearsal. All right. I need everybody in rehearsal Thursday because uh, y'all got some good songs y'all going to sing. Huh? Y'all sound like a choir. Do that one more time. <laughs> 6 30 in the choir room. The choir will be gathering. If you want a good seat and you've been in the choir, I suggest you come to rehearsal Thursday night. This is our first night New Year's Eve service since before the pandemic. And so I'm really excited about our 6 p.m. service. So 9.30, now for those who are not comfortable driving at night, I admonish you to be here at the 9.30 service. Uh, 9.30 next Sunday morning, preaching a sermon called, I Made It. How many of y'all are just glad after this year, child, you can just say, I made it. And then next Sunday night, man, y'all need to be here preaching a sermon called The Death of 2023. I'm so ready for 2023 to be over. I don't know what to do. It's been a crazy, Lord have mercy. Two more things that we're getting ready to give. Pray for our family, my extended family, the Perrys, especially my big brother Bruce uh, in the death of his daughter Miyaka. Very sudden, unexpected, no, just unexpected. She went on to be with the Lord this past week. Pray for Bruce and for Brandon and for Bryce, for the entire family. Um, uh, Miyaka's funeral is going to be uh, Friday at 11 here at the church. The viewing will be here. What you say, Pastor? Yeah, oh, Lord, Delmar, thank you so much. And for her husband, thank you, baby, uh, Delmar, and their 10-month-old sweet baby. Yes. And so that funeral is on Friday at 11, and then the viewing is here at the church Thursday from 5 to 7. Lift up lift up the entire family in prayer. Final thing, uh, Bishop Senior was discharged from one hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. And he's listening right now. Can we just show some great love to our bishop? Yes. Yeah, so he is, he is now in a rehab hospital. Um, it's, it's a process, but he is making amazing progress. If anybody knows him, you know he's a fighter. And so it is a process. Now I'm asking, I am asking, uh, you know, there, there are many who say, well, he's my father too. And that is a testament to the nurturing nature of my parents that so many of us so many of you feel that kinship um fatherhood and motherhood 
to feel like he's your father too. He's not. And, and I say that lovingly because I, I, have, I have watched and I, I have close sibling-like persons because of the nurturing nature of my father, right? And I know everybody wants to see him. Hear me clearly. He's mine. And I will never apologize for putting boundaries. No matter how much you talk about me around your kitchen table. Thank you, Gene. About what I don't have the right to do. Try me and see. He has therapy six times a day. Yes. You don't need a visit after that. I know he's calling some people, and that's fine. If he, if he calls, talk to him. But you take, you take the initiative to keep it short. If he calls you, talk to him. If he calls you, call him back. If he texts you, text him back. But I am asking as his only child that we please don't go searching the phone books, calling to see which one he's in till you find it and I just want to lay my eyes on him I'll bring a picture of him thank you for the amen right there amen I, I, I am unapologetic in that it's a process that he's going through um, and he needs rest when he's not in therapy so I'm asking I am asking lovingly that we all respect what your bishop is asking. Amen. Amen. Now, mother, go see her as often as you want. Mother is just as content. She's in good spirits. She just don't like the food where she is. But she's in good spirits. She is content. She loves visitors. She loves telling us who all came to see her in the run of a day. And uh, so if you desire, you know, don't, don't make it a long visit, but she loves company. Y'all know that. Uh, but we, can we just celebrate that at 95 and 96, they are just going strong in the name of the Lord. We celebrate we celebrate that. Praise the Lord. How many of you have bought gifts for people for Christmas? Y'all just lying because y'all think it's a trick question. Nobody put, did y'all see the people? Everybody was like, I ain't putting my hand up because I don't know where he's about to go. How many of you bought gifts for people? Some of y'all still lying. How many of y'all are excited to get gifts from people? Well, listen, <laughs> Lord, help, help the people, Lord, help the people. There is no greater gift you can give than gifting to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way, there is no way that you should have spent all of your money to put under a tree and the one that died on a tree for the sins of the world, we give him what's left. This morning on Christmas Eve, I want to admonish you to be a liberal, cheerful giver. The tithe belongs to the Lord. The only way we're able to do the ministry and the vision that we do is because you are faithful in your giving. And so I want you to be faithful as we come to the end of the year. For those of you who are financially minded, you got two weeks to give to your charitable organizations. Why not make this the one you do it to? In Jesus' name. The word of the Lord is clear that when we give, we receive blessings. Not money, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God blesses us. Blessings are things beyond money. Sometimes blessings are things money can't even buy. And so this morning, 
you ought to operate in obedient stewardship. The tithe belongs to the Lord. The offering belongs to the Lord. If you are at home or you are in here and you are an electronic giver, our giving platforms are on the screen and you can give electronically if you're the old-fashioned giver like me. The uh, ushers are going to pass through the aisles and you can place your offerings in the receptacles as they come. God, we thank you for the greatest gift we've ever known, Jesus Christ. And so now we reciprocate. We give back to you out of the blessings you've given unto us because we want others to be blessed by this ministry. Receive our gifts is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord in this place. Come on, put your hands on it if you're not giving. This is an old one. We sing this every year. Since I was over in the old sanctuary, you ought to know it. We're going to sing a little bit of it. You ought to know it. Life, life to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing glory, glory, glory to the new. Come on, everybody. Jesus. 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 Yeah. Oh. Jesus. 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 So holy. What are they saying? Everybody stand, put your hands together. Jesus.
God, we give you glory to the newborn king. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Bless this word now. Let it be lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Speak to us so that we might hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you've got a copy of the word of the Lord while you stand, if you've got a Bible app on your phone or you've got your Bible in your hand, go back. We've been in this first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew this entire month. Go right back there again to Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to begin at verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. For just a few minutes on this Christmas Eve, I want to preach with this thought in our minds. He is him. He is him. If you are a football fan on any level, particularly college football, at some point this season you had to be enthralled with the story of the University of Colorado and Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Primetime. At the halftime of their first game, Fox reporter Jenny Taft was interviewing Prime about how they had done. They had put a surprise on TCU and found themselves still in the midst of the game. They have a two-way player by the name of Travis Hunter that has come with Prime from Jackson State. He's a defensive back and a wide receiver. He was heralded. I don't know what in the world made him decommit to Florida State. He must have bumped his head, but he was supposed to go to Florida State. But be that as it may, he's an incredible athlete who plays both ways. So Jenny Taft was asking about the play of the Buffaloes in the first half and how they had done and about uh, Shadour and about Travis. And Dion went on to mention how they had missed Travis on a couple of passing routes where he was wide open, had burned the defensive back who was trying to cover him. And then Prime said with cocky sagacity, if he had caught those two passes, the Heisman would be sitting in his house this winter. Then as he walked away, Prime looked back at Jenny Taft and made this statement about Travis Hunter. He is him. It was a more up-to-date kind of ebonic way of saying he's the man. That nobody can stop him. He is him. Nobody can keep up with him. Nobody else is like him. That's what he was saying about Travis Hunter. He is him. He's, he's one of a kind. Nobody can do it like him. Nobody can do what he does. He is him. He's the man. And as I thought about that statement and as we come to another Christmas, that phrase crossed my mind again, not about Travis Hunter, but essentially those were three words that the angel told Joseph. When the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus because he is going to save his people from their sins. You know what the angel was really saying to Joseph? He is him. Nobody can do what Jesus does. He is him. He is unlike anybody else that has ever lived. He is him. Others have tried and failed, but in him there is no failure. He is him. Nobody can heal like Jesus. Nobody could stop him, not even a cross or a tomb. He is him. His name shall be called Jesus because he is coming to do what nobody else could do. He is him. I, I see so much now in this 
this age of intellectual enlightenment where people want to have discussions and debates on the validity and the veracity of Jesus. They want to debate Jesus' historical reality and declare that Jesus is nothing more than a mythological character brought down through time and oral tradition from a foreign land. And I used to think it was my academic and intellectual obligation to participate in those debates, but I don't do that any longer because belief in Jesus is not based on intellectual or empirical evidence. This is a belief that's based on your faith. This is a belief that says, by faith, I believe he came down from heaven, disrobed his divinity, put on humanity, was human and God. He walked the streets of Jerusalem by faith. I believe that he climbed on a cross on Golgotha's hill, that they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And I believe by faith that he died on a Friday night, but that on Sunday morning they went to the tomb. And by faith, I believe that God had raised him from the dead, sent him at the right hand of the Father where he makes intercession on my behalf. And I believe by faith that is what saved me from the penalty of my sins. You can't debate me on that. You cannot intellectualize me on that. You cannot academic me on that because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God and I walk by faith and not by sight. And I believe Jesus saved me from my sins. Is there anybody else in here that can declare by faith, I believe Jesus saved me from my sins. Oh, beloved, don't let Christmas get lost in cards and gifts and parties and gatherings and eggnog and every other drink you're going to drink. Those are nice, except the drinks. Those are nice, but that's not what the angel said. Jesus did not come to give us sentiments. He came to save us from the penalty of sin. Jesus did not come because we are nice people. Jesus came because we are lost people and if he had never come we would never be found he came because we were hopeless and helpless he came because we could not make ourselves right Jesus came for people like me and Jesus came for people like you he came to change people like me and he came to change people like you I declare this morning I can't talk for you but I declare this morning morning that the wrong I did and still do is called sin not a bad moral compass not a lack of ethical mores not unscrupulous activity not mental psychosis not problematic decision making not because I have a contravening consciousness to moral uprightness not because I'm emotionally flawed not because I have criminal predilection I am a sinner and I I can rejoice today because Jesus came to save me from the penalty of my sins. The announcement of Christmas is that somebody has been born that can change your life. Y'all ought to shout better than that on that. Somebody was born that can change your life. And he is him. You shall call his name Jesus. He's going to save us from our sins. Uh, more people aren't shouting because this modern day church has become so materialistic in our theology and sensationalistic in our church anity. That's my daddy's word. That we only shout when we start talking about what you're going to get in the mail and what you're going to get in your bank account. But the greatest shout that ought to ever go forth in the church is the reality that I was lost in sin and Jesus came to save me the greatest shout in the church ought to be that I was sinking deep in sin far from a peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more see how most of y'all ain't saying nothing if you really knew what your sin life was all about and if we really believed where we were going if we didn't confess him you would give God a great shout that God loved us so much that he's 
sent his son to die for the son. For God so loved the world. Before you do anything in the morning, before you open the gifts, before y'all have breakfast together, before you start making your family phone calls, you ought to bow your head or get on your knees before you do anything else in the morning. And you ought to say, God, I thank you that on this day I celebrate that you loved me so much that what I could not do for myself, you did it on my behalf. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them he did it for me. He, that was the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody else and tell them he did it for me. Yes. Y'all sit down and only got three more times to tell you. You'll be on your own. Three things I want to suggest to you and then we'll be gone. That happened because he is him. Number one, this text suggests to me Jesus makes sense of my story. Stick with me. Um, my story only makes sense because Jesus saved me from my sins. Okay. Um, um, people of faith are known by their stories, right? Um, I remember when I went to seminary, both in my master's degree and when I did my doctorate, the first thing you do when you get there is you have to give your call story. They, they want to know the story of your life, particularly in your doctorate, because what you discover in the doctoral dissertation that you do, uh, if you are a theology major, is that somehow you can trace what you decide to do for your dissertation all the way back to some stuff that you dealt with in your childhood. That your story and everything in your life is interwoven into the fabric of your life that has made you who you are. It's the same way for faith. Are y'all listening to me? Who I claim to be now, knowing who I used to be then, only makes sense because of Jesus. Y'all ain't happy. Be back in five minutes. Who I claim to be now and who I know I used to be then only makes sense because of Jesus. The narrative of my life only makes sense when what Jesus did is added to it. Um, it was Aristotle. Aristotle's assertion was that plot organizes events with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes. And my beginning and my middle plight in the plot of my life my beginning and my middle and its plight only lose power because of what Jesus did. Okay, I, I, maybe I went too philosophical. Um, my beginning and my middle was real jacked up. Y'all ain't gonna say amen because you don't want your neighbor to know just how crazy your life has been. My beginning and my middle, I did some stuff. Come on with me in the room. The, the plight of the plot of your life, y'all might as well come on and get honest, how you were towed up from the flow up, the foolish choices you made, the way you blew your money, squandered your opportunity, wasted your chance, said the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person in the wrong way, the stuff you got yourself in, in the beginning and the middle of your life, and then you look at where you are now, and the lessons you've learned, and the person you have become, and the success you've had, you can only say that my ending looks better than my beginning and my middle because Jesus stepped in and said is there anybody in here who's honest enough to admit on a Christmas Eve that my ending looks much different from my beginning and my middle because Jesus yes sir the story of our lives is this what we could not do for ourselves but needed to be done God, God through Jesus intervened on our behalf 
Somebody better come get me. I feel like running. God kept your mind so you could make it through school. God put you in place so you could make the right connection. It's been God and nobody but God. And how many of you can celebrate that your story says it's blessed by God. I'm saved by God. I'm kept by God. I'm lifted by God. I'm sustained by God. I'm here because of God. And let me help you whether you understand it intellectually or even academically about my claiming God and Jesus Christ has done this for me that ain't my problem because my experience is not at the mercy of your opinion somebody better come get me up in here my, my experience is not at the mercy of your argument all I know is it's my story and I have enough sense to know that Jesus is the main character here's the way the old church used to put it this is my story this is my song praise it my yes sir y'all sit down I got two more times to tell you sit down now he is him. Number two, because he is him, I have the promise of protection and presence. Let, let, me, let me add the historicity to the text. And we've dealt with this text for the last three weeks, so we know um, that the next verse says that this was done so that the scripture may be fulfilled that you shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. We know that that is a prophetic utterance from the penmanship and the lips of Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah writes this initially during historical time of Assyrian or Babylonian captivity when the Israelites were under captivity as a consequence of their own choices. And God has come along, yes, and made this promise that he has now come to deliver them from the captivity. The king said to Isaiah, when Isaiah said that to him, tell God to give me a sign. God said, okay, I don't normally operate like that because y'all know that's how we are, give me a sign. <laughs> Read Isaiah and it says, this shall be a sign unto thee. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The ultimate fulfillment of that Isaiah prophecy is Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me? That is not who Isaiah was initially talking. I know I'm messing up your Sunday school theology. That is not initially who Isaiah was talking about. But it found its eventuality. I don't even know if that's a word. Is that a word? Eventuality. It found its eventuality in the birth of Jesus Christ. Are y'all following me? When Jesus is born, they are no longer under Assyrian oppression, but they are now under the political and uh, the political oppression and domination of the Holy Roman Empire. Teach Rudolph McKissick. They have come through the Maccabean revolt with Judas Maccabeus, and they are now Rome is now in charge. There is a crazy emperor in place, and what Rome has done, Rome has assigned Jewish leaders to keep the Jews in place. Are y'all with me? So they are under the political oppression and the political domination of Rome. They are under spiritual oppression because Rome wants them to worship the emperor <laughs> and not anybody else. Are y'all with me so far? And so Jesus comes on the scene and Matthew, God, I'm going to get in trouble. I better not do this, Tim, because I'm missing up everybody's theology. Matthew, who does not write this until after the resurrection of Jesus Christ and is writing this to a Jewish audience. Are y'all listening to me? He writes this to a Jewish audience to say to the Jewish church, this is your Messiah. 
He takes the prophecy of Isaiah <laughs> and puts it on Jesus and says to the Jewish people that listen, I don't care what oppression, power, authority, and domination you've been under from the Roman government. Somebody's been born, yes sir, that can protect you and bring you up out from under oppressive authority. Touch your name, tell your name. That boy pretty smart. Come on, touch him. Jesus was born to deliver them from the oppression they have been under. Which means God being born in Christ lets us know that I have the promise of protection in the midst of every attack I face. God, I don't know how y'all didn't shout. No attack can get the victory over me. I'm gonna say that again. No attack can get the victory over me. I'm gonna say it one more time. No attack whether it is financial, whether it is relational, whether it is political, I don't care who wins the presidency. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. I don't care if Biden gets back in. I don't, I kind of care if Trump get in, but I really don't care who gets in there because I know that the Jesus that I serve has the power, the ability, and the authority to keep me in the craziness of the politics of this country. And this country is crazy. Jesus, he ain't a Democrat or a Republican. He ain't an independent, he ain't a tea party, he ain't a coffee, he ain't a hot cocoa, he ain't nothing else. He is Jesus. And he doesn't need to be in the White House when he's already on the throne. He doesn't need to be a king when he's already king of kings. And I don't worry about anything that happens. Preach Rudolph McKissick. Because there's no attack that can get the victory over me. Are y'all listening to me? I'm about done. Jesus is the sign that nothing can attack me that God won't deal with. Let me say it again. Jesus is the sign that nothing can attack me that God won't deal with. Nothing can attack me that can defeat me, Jesus. That's why I don't have to fret when troubles come to take me out or take me down. I now have a name and when I speak that name, it is a reminder that the very devil in hell, that y'all better hear me in here today. It is a reminder to the devil that I know that whatever he does, it cannot work. Look at somebody and tell them it cannot work. No attack the devil puts on me can work because Jesus is the promise of my protection. He is the answer to my every attack. Lord have mercy. Jesus being born is the sign that God uh, that God will cross up whatever the devil sets up. Do you have Bible for that? And we know, I thought I had Bible readers, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That means whatever the devil sets up, God's gonna cross up. How many of y'all know you've been in some devilish binds? You've been in some devilish situations that you thought were gonna get the best of you. And not only did God bring you out, but he brought you out better than you were when you went in, because God's got a way of crossing up whatever the devil's. Yes, sir. Woo! Come on, this is a simple sermon this morning. You cannot face a problem for which God has not already provided the answer.
Let me say that one more time. You can't face a problem that God hadn't already provided the answer for. Y'all don't know when to shout. So instead of complaining about the problem, woo, I'm going to shout about the answer even if I haven't seen it yet. Y'all ain't helping me. Instead of whining about the problem, I'm going to give God glory over the answer that's already been provided. And I don't see it yet. It hadn't shown up yet. But I'm going to shout in advance that the answer has already been provided. And if I wait on him, if I trust in him, if I believe in him, if I hold on, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary walk and not faint if I just wait on them the answer I wish you push three people and tell them the answer's already there the answer's already there the answer's already been provided the answer's already there you just got to hold on just a little while longer because you don't have a problem God has not already provided the answer y'all better hear me in here so when you, when you face the attack whether it be physical financial, sinful family, job mental, emotional, you need to know God's already provided the solution. Yeah. But it's not just the promise of present, of protection. It's the promise of protection. Y'all sit down. I got one more time to tell you now. You're on your own. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. God among us. That's really what it means. And now, in this ascended dispensation, with the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is God in us. He's God for us. Then he's God among us. Then he's God in us. Did y'all hear what I just said? It's just good theology this morning. God for us was God among us, but now he's God in us through Jesus Christ. None of it makes sense without Jesus. Um, um, God with us, God with us. God. That means that, that Jesus is a cure for loneliness. One of the good news of Christmas of Jesus being born is that I don't have to be lonely. I never have to worry about loneliness when I know what God with us means. Um, in an article I read in Mind and Body, Dr. Margaret Paul um, provides this explanation. She said, loneliness is the feeling you get when you want to connect with someone and either there's no one to connect with or the people you have in your company aren't available for connection. Jesus, that's a whole sermon right there. Because that means you can have company and still be alone. Ooh, that's, I don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah, yeah. You, loneliness can be when you're in the company of people who don't have the emotional maturity, availability, and capacity. Let me leave that long. E Emmanuel lets me know that if I happen upon a season when I am alone, I don't have to feel lonely. See, you take notes. Being alone is a state of being. Being lonely is a state of mind. Woo, let me say that one more time. Being alone is a state of being. I bees alone. Which means nobody's around. But loneliness is a state of mind. 
Somebody, anybody, any, any other only children in here but me? You grew up with imaginary friends? You can call me whatever you want, but I was alone. I was never lonely. I had imaginary friends in every room in the house. I played basketball one on one with imaginary friends. Talked trash when I when I hit the shot. Cause lonely <laughs> is <laughs> is a state of mind. See, this is such a great thing for some people during the holiday season. I, I read where loneliness is the number one emotion felt by persons during the holidays, according to psychology today. Loneliness. Loneliness. Because they see people sharing pictures of family, uh, with family, with friends, and they see parties, and they've been through or they are dealing with grief. There's been a shift in the being state of their life where persons who have been there are no longer there and that they feel loneliness. The good news of Emmanuel, if you receive it by faith, is that Jesus has come to us to be with us and in us as our peace, as our joy, as our company. Now that doesn't, please understand, that doesn't demean or devalue what you are feeling. I ain't that preacher. That doesn't demean or devalue what you're feeling. That doesn't mean you might not necessarily need grief therapy. But what the enemy wants you to do is to speak that feeling of I'm by myself until it lives. He wants you to keep saying I'm by myself. He wants you to keep saying I'm lonely. He wants you to keep saying I've got to spend Christmas alone. He wants you to keep saying nobody's around me because if you speak it long enough, it will live because if you speak it and it lives, it will turn into what you do. Woo! But if you can just remember you are not alone and speak that to yourself and then allow the God who is with you to take over, I'm a living witness that God will begin to give you meaningful relationships and new doors of opportunity and renewed joy and peace. I'm done. I'm done. This is the last thing I want to tell you. He is him. And here's the last reason. If you... If you don't really believe that and you think I'm crazy, I'm a, I'm a religious fanatic and all of that, my experience is my explanation. Okay, I'm going to show it to you right in text. Watch this. Um, when you read verse 21 through 23, look at it again. Um, it, it, uh, it, it says, um, you shall name him Jesus. They will call him Emmanuel. You, 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 missed, you missed the grammatical shift. You shall call him or name him rather Jesus. They will call him Emmanuel. Come back one more time. Talking to Joseph. You shall name him Jesus. They, the people, the world will call him Emmanuel, Jesus. Um, um, name him Jesus. His name is Jesus. His title is Christ. His description is Emmanuel. His name ain't Jesus Christ. Talk McKissick. His name is Jesus. His title is Christ. His description is Emmanuel. I'm going to say it one more time. His name, I feel it. His name is Jesus. His title is Christos. His description is Emmanuel. Now, they won't call him Emmanuel until they see him do some things that convinces them that he is God with us. His name is Jesus. 
But until they see him do some stuff, when they see him, they're going to say, ain't that the carpenter's son? Until they see him do some stuff. But when they see him do some stuff, like walk on water, when they see him do some things only God could do, like take two fish and five loaves of bread and multiply it and feed a multitude. Y'all ain't trying to help me. When they see him do some things that only God can do, like lay hands on the sick and they recover, speak to the dead and they get up. When they see him do some things, they will say based on their experience, he ain't just some man named Jesus. He is Emmanuel who is God with us. So the ones that met him called him Jesus. The ones that experienced him called him Emmanuel. When I meet him, I call him Jesus. But when I start to see some stuff he does, I know he's God in Christ. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Call him Emmanuel based on your experience because there is a name for every experience. I know that Jesus is God with us and I know that he is the Christ and I've got enough experience and evidence in my own life for me to say that he is who he says he is. I don't know about anybody else in here, but I have some things I call him. Yeah. Is there anybody in here today on a Christmas Eve Sunday morning who can say my experience is my explanation? Because there are some testimonies I have about some things only Jesus could do. There are some names that he's been called based on the things that he's been done. He's Karl Barth's holy other breaking in perpendicularly from above. He's Paul Tillich's ultimate reality. He's James Cone's God of the oppressed. He's origins unmoved mover. He's philosophy's uncaused cause. Is there anybody in here who knows? He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a meal. He's Adam's redeemer. He's Moses' bush on fire. He's Abraham's ram in the bush. He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. He's Paul's grace, grace. He's Peter's roaring lion. He's grandmama's way out of no way. He's grandmama's food when you're hungry. He's grandmama's door opener. He's grandmama's, I wish I had somebody who could stand on your feet and say, I don't need all them fancy names. I know who he is for myself. He's my way, yes sir, out of no way. He's my joy in the time of sorrow. He's my hope for all my tomorrow. I got to get out of here. But is there anybody in this room today who can say, I know him for myself? I know who he is and I know what he does. I need somebody in here who ain't afraid to stand up and say if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? Look at your neighbor and tell him neighbor, I got one explanation for who I am today. I've got one explanation for how I am today. I've got one explanation for how I walk today. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, my rose of Sharon. Jesus, my lily of the valley. Jesus, my rock in a weary land. Jesus, my shelter in the time of storm. Y'all don't mind if I just talk about it for just a little while. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. So 
know how I love Jesus because he first loved me. High five your neighbor and tell him his name is Jesus. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody his name is Jesus. He'll be water when you're thirsty. He'll be bread when you're hungry. He'll be your friend when you're lonely. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Because there's not a friend like the lonely Jesus no not one Jesus knows all about my struggles he will guide until the day is done I'm sorry y'all I done got happy this has been a rough year for the McKissick family February mama had a stroke May Mama had a heart attack. Just recently found out my cousin died. And then my daddy had emergency surgery in critical care. Didn't know if he was going to make it. But I'm glad I'm here today in my right mind to declare it was nobody but Jesus. My mama is in a right mind because it was nobody but Jesus. My daddy is getting his strength back because it was nobody but Jesus. My family getting our joy back because it was nobody but Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. None of other. I'm sorry, y'all, but go home singing joy to the world. The Lord. Let us receive her king. Let heaven and nature say, Oh, hell, the power of Jesus. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown it, crown it, crown it. Say yeah, 
you shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. But I'm so glad he's not just a savior. He's a keeper. Anybody in here know he's a keeper? He's kept my family all year. The roughest year. testimony today the Lord will keep you when you feel like you're losing your mind he will keep you when you feel like you can't take anymore he will keep you when you feel like it's falling apart He's a yes he is yes he is stand on your feet. Christmas and you just felt like you needed to be in church. And I don't belittle anybody for that. I don't judge anybody for that. Because that could be the very opportunity the Lord wants to use to give you the opportunity to make a right decision. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior never confess that you believe Jesus died for your sins. Pastor, I don't really understand what all of that means. The good news is we have a team that can help you understand it. Bishop, I want to get baptized. That's cool if you understand baptism is not what gives you salvation. You get baptized because you're saved. You get baptized after you confess as your first step of obedience. The key is confession. Or, Bishop, I, I'm saved, gave my life to the Lord, but I, I strayed away, and it happens. I mean, you know, we all do it. I started living life my own way. It happens. We all do it. And I need a church. I need a church that's vibrant. I need a church that's alive. I need a church that is Bible-based. I need a church where my family and I can grow. I want to tell you today, nothing against any other church on the planet, but this is the baddest church on the planet right here. Nothing against any other church. If you're visiting from somewhere else, and you say, that ain't true, my church is the baddest. That's what you're supposed to say. But if you need a church where you can grow, pastor and I would love to be your leaders. We've got a team that would love to help you grow. And pastor, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I don't want to go into 2024 the same way. I want to end the year giving my life to the Lord, rededicating my life to the Lord. I want you to grab, if you're in any of those categories, grab your personal belongings. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to put a mic in your hand. I'm not going to ask you your name. None of that. This is our way of celebrating with you 
and then organizing for you to go with our team. Grab your personal belongings and meet me at this altar right now. If you're online, don't sign off. I've got a way for you. If you're in the balcony, come to these steps and come down. If you're on the main floor, grab your personal belongings. Walk down here right now. Whoever you are, wherever you are, make your move right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Wherever you are right now, right now, begin to make your move on a Christmas Eve. Make this Christmas unlike any you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, girl. Lord have mercy. This is one of my childhood friends bringing her children. I remember her when she was their age. Yeah, come on, somebody else this morning. Somebody else this morning. Come on, make your way. Here comes the other sister. Come on. Come on. Make your way. Now that some have come, break the mold and you walk this way right now. Come on. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, come on this morning. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. Wherever you are. Come on, wherever you are, whoever you are, whoever you are, God bless you, God bless you. Go ahead on, Jeremy. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you, baby. Come on, somebody else this morning. one favor and then I'm done. I want you to ask somebody standing next to you. Ask them, is Jesus Christ your Savior? Just ask them. Don't be scared. Now ask them, are you a member of a church? If they don't say yes, grab their hand. Walk them down front right now. If they don't say yes, grab them by the hand. Walk them down front right now to the greatest choice of their life. If they said yes to every question, then just give God praise that they are saved. Hey, y'all doing all right? Welcome. Now we're gonna have to get their information. They don't, they probably, everybody wonder like, how you know all this about them? The stories I could tell. Um, so we're going to have to get their information. Are you going to bring them back? All right, praise the Lord. Listen, what a great choice y'all have made today. The greatest choice you could ever, ever make. And so what we want to do, our team is going to get your information, tell you what your next steps are uh, to become a part of the kingdom of God. Now, now if y'all's mother ever gets on y'all's nerves, I'm going to give y'all my number because I got blackmail stories that y'all can hold over her head for a lifetime. <laughs> can we celebrate them as they go, just go with our team for a minute and they're going to get your information. Come on, can we celebrate them as they go? Now listen, you're online or you're in here. You say, Bishop, I really wanted to come, but I got scared. It's all right, it's cool in the game. We, we've got something for you. All you have to do, if you're in here and you just got scared, or you're at home, text TBC Decision to 54244. Or you can email aim at the Bethel Experience.com. That's all you gotta do. You'll get a, if you text, you'll get a, a text back with a link Click the link, it will open up, fill out the information, and after you fill it, hit send, and our team will be in touch with you. Pastor, join me up here. I don't know if Jocelyn is here. I know, Josh, join me. I know you on the, on the monitor. Can you hit me over here? I want us to stand as a family. Janae is with Bishop, so he could get online. She's in town, but she's my baby girl. Our baby girl is, is, uh, 
out with him this morning. Jocelyn, if you're downstairs, can you make your way out here this morning? Hey, son. I hadn't seen him because he, he lives on his own now. He's All our children grown and gone in Jesus. Well, they're not gone, but you know, we're proud of them. We're proud of them. Listen, Christmas is upon us. Paula, join us up here. She's my cousin's sister. Yeah. I don't know if Jocelyn's coming or not. She's working. Yeah, she's... Oh, he talking about so am I. Yes, I know you are so. I'm keenly aware that you, you are working. Listen, from our family to yours, we, we want you to know that as your first family, we wish you an incredible Christmas, um, that it be a time of family, of fun, of fellowship. Pray for us candidly. This is going to be the most unusual Christmas we've had um, with mom and dad not being at the table with us. Um, it's going to be different but we've got the joy of the Lord. And our greatest joy is that they won't be with us, but they are here. But we want you to have a great time this year. Uh, be safe, be careful, go see the color purple. Enjoy your family, man. There is nothing like family. Enjoy your family. If your family is not here, enjoy your friends who have become your family. And so we wish you the best, blessed Christmas you could ever have. And so God, we thank you that we come as a family to our family to thank you for family. Bless all of us and our families, those who may be leaving sometime today, give them safety over the highways. Those who may have family coming, give them safety. Those who will be leaving sometime during the week, grant them traveling mercy. Let today and tomorrow be a great day of loving on each other, enjoying each other, but nothing more than enjoying Jesus. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Hey, Merry Christmas. Peace.